Good morning. In the lesson today, we are going to look at some series parallel circuits. Um, here's the first example. What we have are two branches, this one and this one, connected in parallel to the source. So we might want to consider this branch to be Z1, and it includes a resistor and inductor connected in series. And this branch here is Z2, which contains only a capacitor. So what we do is first write an expression for the impedance Z1 and the impedance Z2. And in order to do that, we use the series formula, which you'll recall is Z is R plus XLJ minus XCJ. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually calculate our XL and XC values because you can see here that we don't have those values in ohms. We have instead the inductance, which is L, uh, and the capacitance, which is C. So we start with the formula for XL, two pi FL. So we take two pi and multiply by 10K and 100 milli. So I'm gonna show you that calculation. You can see here I've got complex mode on. I've ensured that I'm in degrees. I also have engineering mode on. So two pi multiplied by 10 kilo and by 100 milli. So this is 6.283 kilo. And this would now be ohms. Okay, on, um, in all of these uh, first calculations, I'm gonna keep three decimal places uh, in my numbers. And at the end, I'm gonna round to three significant digits. Okay, I'm gonna do a similar calculation now for XC. Except you'll remember the formula for that is one over two pi FC. So one over two pi times 10K times three nano. All right, so I'm gonna show you that calculation as well. Now remember that I like to punch the whole bottom in first and then invert that. So again, two pi multiplied by 10 kilo and by three nano, where's my nano there? Okay, push equals. So that's an answer for the denominator. And then we want to invert that answer. So x negative one equals, so this is 5.305 kilo ohms. All right, so now I can write out an expression for Z1 and for Z2. So remember, again, we're using R plus XLJ minus XCJ on each branch. Okay, so let's start with branch one. Well, R is 100 plus XLJ. So XL we worked out is here. So plus 6.283 kilo J, and then there is no capacitor. So that's all we have for Z1. What about for Z2? Well, that branch has no resistor, no inductor, so we're only gonna have this third portion of the complex number, negative XCJ. So negative 
5.305 kilo J. Okay, so now we know the impedance here and the impedance here. We have those numbers in rectangular form. And we want to combine them now in parallel because the branches are connected in parallel. And you can do this a couple of ways. I like to use the product over sum formula. So in the top, I'll want to multiply Z1 by Z2. And in the bottom, I will want to add Z1 and Z2 together. Okay, so in the top, I want to be multiplying the two complex numbers. And I'll do that in a moment. I want to multiply that complex number by this one. And in the bottom, I want to add the complex numbers. So I'm going to do that right now. So I just want to take this and add it to this. Well, in fact, the only thing you have to do is add these imaginary parts. Remember when you're adding, you simply collect like terms, but here it says though there's a zero. So you do 100 added to zero will stay zero. And now we have to add the two imaginary parts. So we take this 6.283 kilo, and actually we subtract 5.305 kilo from it, and we get the number 978, and it's positive. So this is plus 978J. Okay? So um, again, all you have to do is collect like terms. So I added 100 with zero, and then I added these two numbers, um, 6.283 kilo added with negative, 5.305 kilo and that gave me 978 and don't forget it has that uh, J operator. Okay and now I'm going to use the calculator to do the harder operations okay which are the multiplication first and then the division. So we're going to just use our calculators to do this because we're inside of a circuit problem, so I'm gonna let you use the shortcuts here, okay? So I'll just show you how we can easily do that multiplication first. All right, so I would basically type in what's shown there, except of course we use the I. So in a bracket, 100 plus 6.283, Kilo, now we have to put the I on it, like that. Close the bracket. If you want to punch a multiplication sign, you can, although it's implied. So in the other bracket, um, well, the real part is zero, so I think I'll just put that in, but it's not strictly needed. So zero minus 5.305 kilo, and again, don't forget the I. Close the bracket. And here we go. This is the uh, numerator. This is the real part of the number, 33.331. But look, it's mega. And then for the imaginary part, shift and equals negative 530.5 kilo and it has that J. All right, so that's the multiplication in the numerator. So using the calculator is saving us from doing, you know, that um, first outside, inside, last that we did whenever we multiplied two numbers in um, rectangular form. Okay, so I've got the numerator done. It's in the calculator, so without clearing the calculator, I'm just going to now do divided by, divided by, and I'm gonna put this complex number in, 100 plus 978J. But 
Again, I'll put a bracket. 100 plus 978. I close it and push equals. And here we go. So I'm going to write this out. It is 2.91. Kilo, okay, shift equals negative 33.8, that's also kilo, and this of course would be in ohms. Okay, so another way to, uh, oops, we definitely need, it's the I, we definitely need a J there to show that that's the, um, imaginary part right there. And the other way to write that, of course, is with the kilo at the end of the number. So, oh, this is uh, really mucked up, I think. I'm not gonna be able to use my my tape. Well, that's all right. A little bit upsetting for me to tell you the truth, but okay, I'm just gonna rewrite it. Okay, so. This is perfect, just like that, okay? And that would be the impedance in rectangular form. Now, uh, if you wanted it in polar form, I think we remember how to do that as well. I think we could just do shift plus. Should we give it a try? Shift plus equals. So that would be 33.9 kilo. Here's where we'd put the ohms, and then you could get ready for the angle, and it's shift equals, shift equals, and there's the angle, negative 85.1 degrees. Okay, so within the applied problems, I do not mind at all if we rely heavily on our calculators, okay? So there are some questions where I want you to do the, um, multiplication and division mathematically, right? So that means with the foiling as required and with the complex conjugate and so on, um, that will be uh, not in the circuit problems. Within the circuit problems, we'll use the uh, calculator to make things simpler for us. Okay, let's go ahead and do our second example, so here's another one. Okay, so take a look at this one now. I have one, two, three branches with components on them. Okay, so how would you work out the total impedance here? Well, what you need to do is first combine these two branches in parallel. Once you've combined those two branches in parallel, they will be in series with this third branch. Okay, so you're, you're combining these two like this in parallel and then they are in series with this third branch here containing only the resistor. Okay, so I'm gonna label my branches. So I'm gonna just say this one right here is Z1 here is Z2, and then this one here, which, which contains, um, so there's my Z1 and my Z2, and this one here containing only the resistor, I'm gonna call that Z3. Okay, so what we're gonna do is calculate uh, first, the combined result here, which I'm gonna call Z12 maybe, okay? So Z12 is found by taking Z1 and multiplying it by Z2 and dividing by the sum of Z1 and Z2. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna take a quick 
look and note that, oh, wow, everything's already in ohms, which is great. So we don't need to use those XL and XC formulas. So over here, I'm gonna write my expressions for Z1, first of all. So here's Z1, it has a resistor and an inductor. So I need R plus XLJ. So 200 plus 10 kilo J. So again, R plus XLJ. That's correct for that branch. Now I'm gonna do my expression for Z2. Now look, there is no inductor, but there is a capacitor. So here I need R minus XCJ. So R minus XCJ. So these are the quantities I'm going to use within the formula here. So I will be in the numerator multiplying those numbers together. And in the denominator, I'm simply gonna add them. Now again, adding them, I mean, I could do the adding in the calculator, but adding them is a matter of collecting like terms. So I can do that right here. I just have to add 200 plus 400. So that is 600. And now what will the imaginary part be? We have positive 10K added to negative 12K. That gives you negative 2K times j. Just like that. So we're all set. I'm going to take the calculator now and do that multiplication in the numerator. Okay, so let's do that. And I'll show you it here as well. So start with your bracket and I have to write 200 plus 10 kilo i. Close the bracket. Multiplication is implied, but we do need the bracket. 400 minus 12 kilo i. Close that, ready? Push equals, that's the real number part. 120.08, oops, 120.08 mega, mega, that's the real part. And what's the imaginary part? Shift equals, there it is. So plus 1.6 mega, and it has an I. Okay, so there we go. That's the, the product in the numerator. And I didn't have to do, you know, First, outside, inside, last, and then make j squared equal to negative one and then collect like terms. Okay, you do need to know how to do that, um, but not within the circuit applications. Okay, now I didn't clear the calculator and that's because with that number in here now, I just wanna do the division. So divide it by and now I have to put in this number, 600 minus 2K, I, close it. Okay, and here comes our answer for Z12 equals. Okay, so there we go. It's uh, 15.5 uh, ish and it's kilo, okay? But the other number will also be in kilo, so shift equals, see, it's also in kilo, plus 55.3 J, so all of that is kilo ohms. Okay, so that represents the combined total of these two parallel branches. 
So I'm not clearing the calculator. I want to keep all that in there because in order to find Z total now, we take that combination, the Z12, and we're simply going to add Z3 to it. Okay, what is the correct expression for Z3? Now, Z3 was purely a resistive branch. So, the R plus XLJ minus XCJ is just going to be an R value, right? There is no imaginary part at all. So, what I'm going to do to find Z total is take our uh, Z12 value, which was right here. and add tw the real number, which is 27 kilo to that. Okay, so again, it's like collecting like terms. All I really have to do is take 15.8 kilo and add 27 kilo to it. So taking the sum of 27 and 15.8 gives me 42.8. So that would be kilo ohms. The imaginary part won't change here. And that's it. So if I wanted to do it on my calculator, remember I didn't clear my calculator after this last step. So I'm just gonna do plus 27 kilo. Okay, so there it is. There's the 42.8 kilo. Oops, I keep moving this, I'm sorry. And then I'm gonna do the shift equals. So that's this part right here, the imaginary part, 55.3 kilo with the um, I on it. And if I wanna go to polar form with that, I can do that here as well. All right, so then I'm gonna go shift plus. Shift plus equals, so this would be 69.9 kilo ohms and what about the angle 55 sorry 52.3 degrees okay and there you have it so i hope that uh, you were able to follow those two examples well i have some examples posted for you in blackboard to try Okay, so give those a try, please. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.